so welcome all of you in today's video lecture today we are going to understand on a very very understand a very very important chapter in strength of materials that is analysis of plane stress and plane strain but in today's video lecture i will particularly focus on analysis of plane stress once we understand plane stress it is it will be very easy for us to understand the plane strain condition first you need to understand this and in this chapter a very very important topic is there that is mohr circle but what mistake people do is that they directly try to understand mohr circle and they miserably fail they don't know that why they are studying mohr circle what is the need of mohr circle they don't know that what are the elements that are involved in mohr circle like first you have to understand about stress then you have to understand about normal stress shear stress then you need to understand about the mag maximum normal stress minimum normal stress maximum shear stress plane of maximum normal stress plane of maximum shear stress then only you will be able to understand mohr circle is it clear to you now why i have written these things uniaxial loading biaxial loading combined loading my dear try to understand uh there is a component suppose which has got some practical application let it be a beam in a construction whether it's a beam in a building beam in a bridge it is subjected to some kind of loading okay it may it is combined loading similarly there may be an object which is subjected to come biaxial loading there may be an object which is subjected to uniaxial loading we need to understand that what is the stress that is developed in those materials what is the norm maximum normal stress that is developed what is the maximum shear stress that is developed next we need to understand that where this maximum normal stress or shear stress is developed is developed that means in an object at which point at which plane the normal stress and shear stress is becoming maximum are you able to understand then only we will be able to understand the failure behavior of that of um, uh, component which is subjected to certain loading condition i will explain you in detail but i'm just trying to give you a little bit of motivation that why we need to understand analysis of plane stress and thereby mohr circle try to understand one very simple uh, logic mohr circle is nothing but it see it's the gra graphical representation graphical representation now immediate question that comes in our mind is that it's graphical representation of what graphical representation i have understood but graphical representation of what that is what i'm trying to say graphical representation of state of stress at a point in a component or in an element are you able to understand it is the state of stress at a point in a component or in an element now you don't know that which component we are talking about how is it loaded uniaxial biaxial combined we will come to that which point we are talking about what is the meaning of state of stress we don't know these things so this definition is not clear to us and it is my duty to make you understand each and every term in this definition are you able to understand so our objective is to find out the state of stress for different type of loading condition okay for different type of loading condition we will be able to find the state of stress and finally our objective is to develop an analytical expression analytical expression which will be a which will be a generalized expression 
generalized expression generalized expression means it will be valid for combined iaxial uniaxial whatever uh, loading is there you will put your values accordingly i will teach you once we are thorough with those analytical expressions we understand the meaning of each and every term in those analytical expressions then we will move to graphical representation that's it i can teach you more circle in 3 or 5 minutes my dear believe me within 5 minutes i will be able to teach you more circle but to reach to that platform i need to spend some 40 45 minutes at least okay on teaching these things these are the plat these are the foundation this is more circle is a result these are the inputs we have to give okay so let us move to different loading conditions and let us understand that how to draw the state of stress okay actually while uh, studying this topic people start from combined loading only but from combined loading in because in combined loading everything is there the uniaxial part biaxial part everything is there and they obtain a general expression uh, expression from there they try to understand uniaxial loading that is also one way but i will try to make you understand first about uniaxial loading then i don't have to spend so much of energy in making you understand about combined loading you will be able to understand very smoothly and easily so please try to understand uniaxial loading please it is my request first let me tell you one important thing that we need to find the state of stress and all those stuffs our ultimate aim whether it's a uniaxial loading biaxial loading combined loading our ultimate aim will be to find out the maximum magnitude of maximum normal stress and maximum shear stress we need to find the magnitude of the maximum normal stress and shear stress and also the plane of maximum normal plane of maximum normal and shear stress where these stresses are becoming maximum it is very important for us to understand because failure will start from there only along those plane only we will see that how brittle and ductile material fails under uniaxial loading we will find from the analytical explain analytical expressions these planes and from practical result we will match it okay so magnitude of the maximum normal and shear stress so if you think of a uniaxial loading you can think like this this can be a bar this can be a rod it is loaded uniaxially like this what we need to find the maximum normal stress maximum shear stress everything many people will say that in this case how shear stress will come into the picture my dear you are not getting any idea about shear stresses because you are observing the cross sectional planes only let me draw the three dimensional view to make things easier for you this line will also be dotted isn't it okay so this will also be dotted okay so now if you observe now if i suppose ask you to write 
the stress induced many people will write sigma equals to p upon a i will ask them what is a they will say sir a is nothing but the cross sectional area i will ask them show me the cross sectional area they will say sir this is one cross sectional area this is also a cross sectional area there are infinite number of cross sectional planes like this these are cross sectional planes only isn't it these are the cross sectional planes only in these planes the stress induced is this that means sigma equals to p upon a so definitely sigma is the normal stress sigma n i am writing is it clear sigma is the normal stress sigma n i am writing you are you can see that at these normal planes or at these cross sectional planes i must say there is only normal stress shear stress is zero but my dear there may be planes inclined like this also there may be planes inclined like this isn't it there are planes why i am saying maybe there are definitely planes inclined like this in these planes in these planes i am drawing these hatched lines in these planes definitely there is normal stress as well as shear stress okay so shear stress may be absent in this normal in this cross sectional planes but in these planes shear stress may be present and if the shear stress uh, is and we need to find what is the value of the maximum shear stress because if this material is ductile then it is weak under shear so what is the stress that is shear stress that is induced in these planes it becomes very very important for us so let me quickly write two formulas then i will make you understand the state of stress so what are the formulas let me draw the three dimensional view actually i have explained uniaxial loading in beautiful manner and i have derived all the formulas in my particular lecture on uniaxial loading i have uploaded a lecture you can see that not for my benefit definitely you will be benefited there is a normal plane like this but let me consider a plane like this again i am drawing the normal plane only i should have drawn the inclined plane wait just wait for a second now to save some time i have drawn directly so there is a plane inclined like this now how will i define the orientation of this plane please please keep it in mind how will i define the orientation of this plane do one thing draw a normal to this plane like this this line indicates the normal that is the perpendicular to this plane is it clear this line indicates the perpendicular to this plane now with x axis let this normal is making some angle phi this is the x axis and along this axis only the p load is acting this p force is acting like this along this axis only is it clear let this normal let this normal be making an angle of phi with respect to x axis so how will we define this plane this plane is defined like this this plane the normal to this plane is making an angle inclination of phi with respect to the x axis now quickly do one thing break this load into two components you will get p over here first because with transmissibility of force this is the line action of the line of action of this force so I, i'm bringing this force over here now i can break this force into two components try to observe one is p cosine phi and another is p sine phi is it clear to you or not 
this p i have broken into two components p cos phi and p sin phi now which is the normal component this is the normal component to this plane what is the tangential component this this is the tangential component to this plane so this normal force will result in normal stress this tangential force will result in the tangential or shear stress so what will be the value of the normal stress it will be nothing but the normal force upon the area of that plane let it be a dashed and how to relate this a dashed with a that i can quickly show you over here see this is the portion i'm just drawing the two dimensional view this is a this area is the a cross sectional area this is a dashed try to understand this was the normal this is the x axis yes or no this angle was phi so definitely this angle will be 90 minus phi because this normal is making 90 degree with this plane so this will be 90 minus phi so this will be 90 minus phi this is 90 so this will be phi so if this angle is phi then a dash can be written as a upon cos phi see so p cos phi upon a into cos phi so i can write this as p upon a wait p upon a into cos square phi so p upon a into cos square phi now two important results we will get from here sigma normal i am saying that it is a p upon a cos square phi two important results from this expression you can easily say that when this normal stress will become maximum when the phi will be zero degree because at phi is equals to zero this normal stress is becoming equals to p upon a so sigma normal is becoming sigma normal maximum at at phi is equals to zero phi is equals to zero phi is equals to 0 and what will be the value it will be equals to p upon a so we got this formula p upon a for cross sectional planes phi is equals to 0 means cross sectional planes try to understand this this is a cross sectional plane you will agree with me or not this is a cross sectional plane this is a cross sectional plane what is its normal make what angle its normal is making with x axis this normal will be perpendicular to the plane and it's making an angle zero degree with x axis and what will be the value of the normal stress p upon a so any brittle material you take brittle material are weak under tension so a brittle material will fail at a plane where the normal stress is maximum is it clear normal stress is maximum at cross-sectional planes so this is across so let me show you over here again so so this is a cross sectional plane 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 so from two dimensional view your material can brittle material can fail like this 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 wherever it may fail suppose let me bring what chalk So this is the chalk. In this case, it's a rectangular bar. I said you, it can be a rod also. This chalk, it's a brittle material. What happens if I give uniaxial load? It must fail from a cross-sectional plane. Cross-sectional plane means, try to observe this. So this is the chalk. So this chalk must fail from a plane like this, a plane like this. A plane like this anywhere that means if I show the two-dimensional view it will fail from here 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 like this the failure will not take place along a plane like this okay failure will not take place along a plane like this let us observe that what is happening in reality this is the chalk 
I am giving a tensile load. Do not give twisting load. Then you will not get the desired load result. In this case, we are subjecting this rod to a uniaxial loading case. I need to ensure that the load I am giving is not twisting. Well, see, this is the failure. The failure has taken place, you can see that it has taken place along a cross-sectional plane. Is it clear? The failure has taken place from a cross-sectional plane. Okay? You can try this. My camera quality is not so good that it is able to uh, capture the failure. From here, it may be uh, it may be looking like that the plane is little bit inclined, but it should be a cross-sectional plane. If I, I apply pure axial loading, okay. If I apply pure axial loading, see another piece of chalk I am taking to observe the failure. Well, you can see that again the failure is almost the failure is almost from a cross-sectional plane okay then and if in reality the failure is not from a cross-sectional plane then definitely some amount of twisting force you are applying is it clear to you otherwise a brittle material subjected to uniaxial loading it will definitely fail from a cross-sectional plane okay is it clear to you so for time being we have understood up to the failure of a brittle material under uniaxial loading now similarly let us understand that how a ductile material will fail a ductile material is weak under shear so it is important for us to know that what is the value of the maximum shear stress that is developed so let us understand for this particular uh, plane suppose tau will become the shear force upon the area area is a dashed now what will be p sin phi upon a dashed is a upon cos phi so i can write it 2 sin phi cos phi i am multiplying the numerator and the denominator with 2 so i can write 2a so I can write this P upon 2A, 2 sin phi cos phi is nothing but sin 2 phi. Here there is a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Now where the shear is becoming maximum, where the shear stress is becoming maximum, I can write that tau is becoming tau maximum at phi is equals to 45 degree. When phi value is becoming 45 degree, then sine it is becoming sine 90, which is equals to 1, and this expression will become P upon 2A. We can understand this. But this expression is also becoming maximum. Tau is also becoming tau is also becoming equals to tau max at phi is equals to how much? 45 degree plus 90 degree that means 135 degree at phi is equals to 135 degree you see over here 2 phi is 270 degree now what is sine 270 degree it is minus 1 so that is becoming minus upon p upon 2a if you compare the magnitude if you compare the magnitude then the magnitude at phi equals to 45 degree and 135 degrees same only the direction is opposite that means what in at a plane which is 90 degree to this 45 degree plane there is a complementary shear stress developed are you able to understand there is a complementary shear stress developed let me explain you what is happening then you will be able to understand the failure of a ductile material please keep this thing in mind that only two things you have to understand believe me 
still now you are understanding about uniaxial loading but you will understand combined loading in an instance because your concept is becoming very strong over here so tau will become tau maximum where phi is equals to 45 degree and 135 degree is it clear to you <clears throat> or not very good so let me draw the state of stress now we will understand about the state of stress how i defined mohr circle to you i defined that mohr circle is a is the graphical representation of graphical representation of the state of stress at a point in a component or in an element okay in this way only i defined mohr circle now we are ready to understand the state of stress what is our component this total thing is the component what is our element you can constrict your knowledge why i am observing the entire thing let me if this is the point where i am analyzing let me understand a small take a small element over there and let me draw it like this this is the point and this is like this i am drawing the two dimensional view okay I am not drawing the three dimensional view. If if I take the entire a component, I would have taken it like this. But at this particular point, suppose I am taking a small element like this. And then I am drawing the state of stress of that. Is it clear to you? So at a plane where phi is equals to 45 degree, the shear stress is maximum. Now, shear stress is maximum at a plane where phi is 45 degree so this was your x-axis is it clear let me draw an even bigger picture this thing is very very important i will not explain this thing again in combined loading This is the x-axis, suppose, and this is the y-axis. But it's a uniaxial loading, so focus here only. So there is a plane whose normal is making an angle of 45 degree with x-axis. That means phi is equals to 45 degree. So let it be like this. So there is a plane like this. Is it clear? Whose... Uh, normal is making an angle of 45 degree to it x-axis is it clear there will be another plane whose normal is making an angle of 35 degree they are also the shear stress is maximum that means if this is the plane whose normal is making 45 degree with x-axis so and this plane will be 90 degree to this so this will be that plane and this will be that plane you can observe that if you draw the normal let me come uh, write the normal of this as n dashed then what is this total angle this much is 45 degree what is this total angle this is 45 plus 90 the 135 degree again if you see this plane this plane and this plane is parallel these two planes are parallel to each other yes or no so normal of this plane will also make an angle of 45 degree with x-axis so it is clear to you i hope now at phi is equals to 45 degree the shear stress that is acting it is positive at phi is equals to 45 degree the shear stress that is acting it is positive let me write like this Try to observe that this is the clockwise shear. So I have taken the clockwise shear as positive in my approximation. This is what I have approximated that the clockwise shear will be positive. You can denote counterclockwise also and you can in make the assumption in uh, entirely in your uh, further expressions that you going to you are going to develop for biaxial combined loading as positive only as uh, accordingly if you take clockwise here as positive 
then for all these three you follow the same thing if you uh, write counterclockwise shear as positive then do that this direction will become very important in more circle now try to understand if i would have started directly with more circle will you be able to understand these things in detail it is never possible now definitely the complementary shear stress that means from the shear stress developed at this plane phi is equals to 135 degree it is negative we obtained it isn't it that means definitely it is in the counter clockwise direction counter clockwise direction with respect to this center you can see that this is in counter clockwise direction this is in clockwise now what will be the value of this tau i don't know the exact value but i can write tau equals to tau max this is also tau is equals to minus of tau max you can write if you want to show the uh, sign otherwise you can write tau max only because the magnitude will be same only so this is also tau max this is also tau max you can omit the minus sign over here the sign confusion will get more and more clear once we move to combined loading believe me now this is the observation of the shear stress planes is it clear to you my dear failure of the ductile material you have learned that it's a cup and cone failure but you have never been but i don't know that whether you have you are able to visualize the cup and cone failure how the cup and cone failure has occurred this cup and cone failure will occur like this it will occur in the plane of where shear stress will become maximum now now to observe the failure of the ductile material let it be a ductile material so this ductile material will fail from the planes where the shear stress will be maximum so the failure will propagate like this there will be a relative slipping in between two layers along this plane so and there will be a relative slipping between two layers along this plane also there will be a relative slipping between these plane also there will be a relative slipping between these the, between the planes like this suppose this is one plane and this is another plane like this there will be a relative slipping along these planes same thing will happen along all these planes which are inclined at 45 degree angles 45 and 135 degrees so the final failure it will be like this if the uniaxial load is like this there will be a necking for neck formation there will be a neck formation and eventually after the neck formation there will be a cup and cone formation this is the cup this cup formation will be there and there will be a cone formation like this is it clear to you or not see this angle see this angle see this angle see this angle is it clear to you or not <coughs> so this is also 45 degree this is also 45 degree with respect to this if you see this angle this will become 9 135 degree this is also 45 degree this is also 45 degree so the failure will happen like this the same thing is happening over here also is it clear my dear 135 degree means what 45 degree from the other way around is it is it clear so there will be a, a cup and cone fracture okay there is a relative slipping actually uh, there is relative slipping actually actually when i taught you about uniaxial loading separately i explained about luders line and everything in the ductile fracture so there will be a relative slipping between the two planes which are inclined at these 45 degree angles okay is it clear to you or not and two important things are here one is that we need to we have drawn the state of stress 
for shear stress now let us draw the state of stress for the uh, normal stress also which is very simple shear stress was complicated not complicated for first time if you observe it may have look complicated but it's easy so this was our element that we have made from the component what sort of drawing i am making now this was your x axis and you have observed that the shear stress was maximum along these planes like this okay along the planes like this this if you if the normal to this plane is this then this angle was 45 degree if the normal to this plane was like this n dashed then this angle was 135 degree we have understood this now where the normal stress is maximum my dear normal stress is maximum at the cross sectional planes cross sectional planes that also on the x plane this is one cross sectional plane this is the cross sectional plane here the normal stress is maximum so sigma normal i can write sigma normal maximum there is another symbol to write the maximum normal stress it is equals to sigma 1 it is meaning of this is nothing but the maximum normal stress or principal stress i will not explain these things again my dear please note it this is known as the maximum normal stress or the principal stress we have seen that normal stress will be maximum at the cross sectional planes when we derived the formula for normal stress at any plane we saw this formula isn't it p upon a into cos square phi we have seen this yes or no we have seen this formula and in this formula when you put phi equals to 0 you will get these cross sectional planes the planes whose normal if you see this plane the normal to this plane will be along the x axis only where phi so phi the its inclination is 0 so if you put phi equals to 0 sigma normal is sigma normal maximum which is nothing but p upon a where a is the area of the cross sectional plane is it clear sigma so principal stress meaning is the maximum normal stress and my dear this plane will be lovingly called as maximum uh, normal stress plane or you can write it like this major principal stress major principal st major principal plane actually i have defined principal stress wrongly you can write this as maximum normal stress or the major principal stress principal stress can be maximum one or it can be the minimum one is it clear in this plane the normal stress is maximum so sigma n equals to sigma n maximum equals to sigma 1 sigma 1 means major principal stress and the minor principal stress we will show with sigma 2 in this plane actually in this plane you can see that sigma 2 is 0 or sigma is 0 the norm so in for so for uniaxial loading so for uniaxial loading we have understood that sigma 1 is nothing but it will be equals to at phi equals to 0 it will become p upon a where a is the cross sectional area sigma 2 is 0 and it is quite obvious it is uniaxial loading in case of biaxial loading both the sigma 1 sigma 2 will be present is it clear to you or not first tell me if these things are not clear it is not possible for you to understand uniaxial biaxial combined loading all my effort will go in vain i am putting a lot of effort believe me so sigma normal will be equal to sigma normal maximum so same thing we can write on this plane also which is nothing but like this equal to sigma 1 is it clear and 
these were the planes where the shear stress was maximum shear stress was maximum so these planes will be lovingly called as maximum shear stress planes maximum shear stress planes or planes of maximum shear is it clear planes of maximum shear it is also called um, is there anything left which I need to explain over here well Prince major principal plane in this case minor principal well plane will be this plane where the minor principal but there is no question of actually minor principal plane because minor principal stress is itself zero. So sigma normal maximum normal stress is also known as the major principal stress and the plane on which it is acting it is known as the major principal plane. So yes one important thing one thing you observe over here that at the major principal plane what is the value of the shear stress acting? shear stress is zero because when we derived the formula of shear stress what was the formula we derived p upon 2a sine 2 phi i think i have written the correct formula because at phi equals to 45 degree tau will be tau maximum which will be p upon 2a so value of the tau maximum over here is p upon 2a but at a plane that is the cross-sectional plane this plane or this plane the phi is equals to 40 zero so at sin zero this is becoming tau is equals to zero so at the cross-sectional plane the shear stress is also zero so you can understand it in this way also my dear at the principal plane the normal stress will be maximum this is the may first definition of the principal uh, stress principal plane the, at the principal plane the normal stress will be maximum and one observation that can be made is that shear stress is also absent in those planes in this plane where the normal stress was maximum shear stress is absent in this plane where the normal stress is minimum or zero in this plane also shear stress is absent now somebody may raise a question sir uh, at the plane where shear stress is maximum what about the normal stress there may be normal stress with what is the value of the uh, plane where the shear stress is maximum phi equals to 45 degree and phi equals to 135 degree put phi equals to 45 over here sigma is not becoming zero sigma is having some value so at the plane of uh, so at the plane of maximum shear stress there is shear stress but there is also some normal stress acting there is some normal stress is it clear there is some normal stress acting but the normal stress acting at these planes are not important for us because that is not maximum is it clear the normal stress is maximum in these cross sectional planes is it clear and its value will be equals to sigma 1 mean and it will be called as sigma 1 I must say is it clear to you the normal stress is not absent at a plane where shear stress is maximum that is what I have shown over here also shear stress is maximum in this plane there is normal stress also acting we can check it from the formula also I will not do these checkings again for combined loading. I am making you understand now. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to you or not? Please, please try to understand. And one more important thing is there. I don't know whether you have made this observation or not. But the plane of maximum normal stress that is the principal plane and the max plane of maximum shear stress is making an angle of 45 degree with each other. See it. So these things whatever I am saying is valid for uniaxial load, biaxial load, combined load everywhere. Now I will directly move to combined load whether without wasting any time. So please, please focus in each and everything I am saying. 
the this is the plane of maximum normal stress this is the plane of maximum shear stress if you draw it's normal like this if you draw this normal like this these two planes are making an angle of 45 degree so always remember the plane of maximum normal stress and the plane of maximum shear stress are separated by 45 degree to each other is it clear to you or not good now let me just tell you something about biaxial loading and then i will directly move to combined loading because from combined loading we all also we can see this uniaxial loading biaxial loading everything now now let us understand quickly about biaxial loading i am directly drawing the state of stress of a biaxially loaded component because i will again come to biaxially load biaxial loading after discussing combined loading but i need to tell simple things to you this is sigma x this is sigma x sigma x is what sir sigma x is the stress induced in the x um, x along the x direction in case of uniaxial loading also you can write sigma x this was our uniaxially loaded bar where p was the load applied now we can write it like this also what is the stress induced i was writing sigma or sigma normal you can also write sigma x because it is the stress that is induced along the x axis is it clear to you or not very easy but how it is different from by uniaxially loaded is that there will be sigma y also here is a stress that is induced in along the y direction also now i am considering these tensile that means that does not means that it will be tensile only both sigma x and y can be tensile both can be compressive one can be tensile one can be compressive i can i will show you different examples of this for mohr's in case of mohr circle but if you don't understand the analytical expressions you will never be able to understand mohr circle if a difficult problem comes in mohr circle you will get stuck i can assure you that now sigma x will be nothing but sigma 1 sigma x if there is no shear stress present in these planes i can understand that these are the planes where the normal stress is maximum so sigma x itself is this sigma 1 now people may say that how can you understand that whether sigma x is maximum or sigma y is it clear so if i make an assumption like this sigma x is greater than sigma y this is 100 megapascal this is 50 megapascal then definitely sigma x is greater than sigma y so i can write that this will become the major principal stress and the corresponding plane on which it is acting it will become the major principal plane is it clear to you or not major principal plane sigma y will be called as minor principal stress minor principal stress and sigma and this plane will be called as minor principal plane is it clear to you or not this plane will be called as minor principal plane now somebody may say that sir how are you able to understand that this and this this will be the maximum normal stress this will be the minimum normal stress my dear one thing i can understand is that there is no shear stress present in these planes so definitely these are the principal planes now if sigma x is greater than sigma y then this is becoming the major principal stress if sigma y is greater than if suppose if sigma y is greater than sigma x then sigma x will become minor principal stress 
and sigma y will become major similarly this will become major principal plane and this will become minor principal plane is it clear to you now you will say that sir there may be a plane like this where there will be normal stress and shear stress both induced there may be a particular plane like this how to define the orientation of the plane draw the normal draw the x-axis with x-axis we are taking the angle phi some books might take the angle phi with respect to y-axis also they are normal they, have, they will draw normal and they might take the angle with respect to y-axis also phi so be careful with what you are doing is it clear everything i am writing on this whiteboard has a meaning I, it has got a definite purpose now this is the major principal plane okay i will explain those things okay what i was explaining is there may be a plane like this where shear stress may be maximum and if shear stress is maximum in a plane then normal stress is absent no normal stress may be present in that plane is it clear to you or not but what will be the value of the maximum shear stress and how to obtain this value of phi that we will be able to understand once we derive our generalized formula. We cannot use the formula that we have derived in uniaxial loading. Is it clear? So let us derive, write the formula for combined loading directly. Then I can derive for uniaxial loading once again you can check. I will not going to recheck it. I can show you for biaxial loading. Is it clear? Okay, okay. One thing that I can say is I can say the value of the phi actually. I can say the value of the phi because shear stress is maximum at plane whose shear stress is maximum at a plane whose uh, which is uh, shear stress is going to be maximum at a plane phi and its angle with the major with the principal planes whether it's major principal plane or minor principal plane it is going to be 45 degree try to understand if this is the my plane of maximum shear then this value phi will be 45 degree because we have i have told you that the prince uh, that the major principal plane and the shear stress plane it is separated by an angle of 45 degree this is the principal plane its normal was like this with zero it's making zero with the x-axis this is the shear maximum shear stress plane its normal is like this and it will definitely make an angle 5 equals to 45 degree. And since the major principal plane and the minor principal plane, if sigma x is greater than sigma y, then this is the major principal plane, this is the minor principal plane. Since the major principal plane and the minor principal plane are separated by an angle of 90 degree, so this will also become 45 degree. So shear stress is... At a, so maximum shear stress plane is at an angle of 45 degree with principal plane whether it be major principal plane or minimum principal or minor principal plane angle will be 45 degree so it's better to say that the shear stress plane will make an angle of 45 degree with principal plane is it clear to you or not so let us move directly to combined loading first but first of all we need to understand the situation where there will be combined loading i have told you how a material can be subjected to uniaxial loading in utm but how a material can be subjected to combined loading combined loading Suppose this is the beam, this is the depth of the beam I am showing and there is a suppose a hinge support like this and there is a roller support like this and this beam is subjected to a force like this. 
let it be p or something like that it this beam can be subjected to udl also whatever you take suppose this is the neutral axis of the beam now even a novice who don't know anything about bending moment shear force diagram he or she can also tell that this beam is going to bend like this this beam is going to be going to bend like this is it clear my drawing is not perfect so the neutral axis will still pass from the center under certain assumptions that we need to understand when i will explain you about bending stress and all those things now this figure is no longer good so let me erase it and draw the final figure i am using two clothes one is wet and another is dry so this is the beam now now tell me suppose these were your initial supports were like this this is the load acting now tell me that what is happening to these members what is happening to these members these members are subjected to compression there will be a compressive stress induced in these members and what is happening to these members members which are below the neutral axis for this type of loading it is subjected to tension tensile stress is it clear now again remember the definition of mohr circle i told you it is the graphical representation that's why i have not erased this star mohr circle our ultimate aim is to reach there so graphical representation of the state of stress of the state of stress at a point in an element we have understood how to find the state of stress at a point in an element for uniaxial loading how to draw for a combined loading now which point in this is the L component entire component which point will you select whether you will select a point over here or here let me draw one figure and again it is important to understand the combined loading which point you are going to select a point above the neutral axis or below the neutral axis of the beam tell me you will say sir i will select a point over here my dear you could have selected a point over here also here also it's your choice similarly you could have selected a point over here also here also here also here also but suppose for a time being you are selecting a point like this you have selected a point this point you have selected now how to draw the state of stress at this point this is my point and how will i draw the state of stress i'm taking for a now i'm not considering for the total component for the small element okay for the small element now what is the state of stress there is a normal stress developed and that is known as the bending stress let it be denoted with sigma you can write it sigma x again sigma b whatever be 
but you cannot write sigma 1 directly you don't know that the normal stress will be max the normal stress that is acting at this plane will become maximum at this instance up till now this is the maximum because it's a case of uniaxial loading but my dear friend in this in at this point there will be a bending stress due to the bending moment which we write like from this equation sigma upon y is equals to e upon sigma by y is equals to m by i equals to e by r so sigma is equals to we write sigma is equals to m y by i why is this distance from the neutral axis so in this case this will be your y is it clear to you or not now so what is m m is the bending moment at this point bending moment at this point this point this point this point will be same but sigma will be different because y values will change so sigma will be maximum over here and here here it will be the maximum compressive stress and sigma here will be maximum because it will be maximum tensile stress moment of inertia is also same so i can say that sigma will be is equals to my by i so there will be a bending stress due to this bending moment but my dear there will be a shear force or shear stress developed due to shear force acting this was our loading isn't it this was the loading if there was hinge support this can be roller support at this side and hinge at this side whatever at this point suppose at this point there is some shear force acting at distance x i'm not going into these things this is very simple thing there is some shear force acting due to that shear force there will be a direct shear stress have you understood what i have said due to a sh that shear force acting there will be a sh direct shear stress direct shear stress direct shear stress each and every word i write in on the board is important there will be a direct shear stress direct what is important you will understand why i am saying so this will be subjected to shear stress also like this let me show you over here there is normal stress developed due to the bending stress and there will be a shear stress also like this is it clear to you or not so this is the state of stress now try to understand what i was saying that now you cannot say that this is your principal plane or this is the value of the maximum normal stress because in this plane shear stress is also acting am i able to make you understand that at this plane shear stress is also acting so this plane will not be the maximum normal stress plane then where will be the uh, then what will be the value of the normal stress maximum normal stress maximum normal stress we denote with sigma 1 minimum normal stress we denote with sigma 2 what will be these values so maximum normal stress where will be the maximum normal stress plane we will find out those things <coughs> maximum normal plane is not this not this not this not this because their shear stress is acting so it will be somewhere inside suppose this is the plane where the normal stress is maximum is it clear i don't know how much then this plane will become the major principal plane you will be able to understand these things when i will take a particular problem to discuss is it clear and maximum shear stress plane it is at an angle of 45 degree with the maximum principal with the maximum principle with the principal stress plane with the principal plane that only i can say up to this point because i don't have any values of sigma shear stress acting tau i don't have any values next sir is there any other example where 
A material is subjected to combined loading. There are many examples, my dear. But one more example I can show you where the shear stress will be not due to direct shear. That will be due to the torsional shear. Suppose you have got a rod like this. It is subjected to some P force, uniaxial load. But we are not restricting our knowledge to this only. There is some torsion also acting like this. Let the value of torsion be T. Now you write the state of stress or you draw the state of stress at any point in this component. Let my point be this. Any point. There will be normal stress due to this P. We have understood up to now. Up till now, if I cannot understand this, then what is the point of teaching? There will be sigma value. Again, I cannot say that whether this will be maximum or not or whether this plane will be major principal plane or not. Because there may be shear stress and there will be shear stress. So if I draw the state of stress, it will look like this only. Sigma, sigma, there is shear stress tau, 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 tau. There will be shear stress like this. Is it clear? But remember, in this case, this tau is not the direct shear stress or this tau, anything, is not the direct shear stress. It is from the torsional shear stress. Shear stress. You need to find the value from the torsion equation, my dear. Tau by R is equals to T by J, G. T by J, which is equals to G phi upon L. This phi is different. Do not confuse okay when i will teach you torsion i will come to this okay it, it is also a very very important interesting chapter but only thing that i want to say you that this is the torsional shear stress not the direct shear stress so we have understood how to draw the state of stress from different loading diagram whether we get a uniaxial loading, whether we get a biaxial loading, whether we get a combined loading, where shear stress is also acting at the cross-sectional planes. In case of biaxial loading, there was no shear stress in the cross-sectional plane. Shear stress was induced at some planes which are not the cross-sectional planes. But in case of combined loading, there may be shear stress present there is in fact definitely shear stress present with the normal stress in the cross-sectional planes. Now I will write the com generalized formula for combined plane. Combined loading. I have written the formulas to find out the normal stress and the shear stress in case of uniaxial load. That is P upon A. P upon A cos square phi. Cos square phi. And tau we got at any plane who, whose normal is inclined at an angle phi with x-axis. Tau we got as p upon 2a sine 2 phi. And I have shown you the derivation. But in case of combined loading, it is not possible for me to show you the entire derivation in this limited amount of time. Already this video is stretching too long. You can find out it in any book you refer. You can refer to uh, Timoshenko and Young's book. You can refer to GR and Goodnose book. You can refer to Bansal and any other strength of material book. These three books which I have named, these are only good. It is not like this. There are many good, there are many good books available in the market. Okay. Now, everything already I have explained you. Now just some little bit of formality is left. Combine loading. Well, let me draw the state of stress first. So this is your sigma x acting along the x-axis along the x-axis along the y-axis there will be sigma y is it visible to you yes 
let me draw these things let me erase these things first So, uh, if you look into this figure, you may see that up till now it is just a case of biaxial loading. If I do not draw anything more, you will say that sir, if sigma x is greater than this is the principal stress, if sigma y is greater, this is the principal stress, if sigma x is greater, this is principal stress, this is, this is major principal stress, this is minor principal stress and all those things you can say. Is it clear? This is the major principal plane. This will be minor principal plane and all these things you can see. But moment I add shear over here, now no longer this sigma x can be written as sigma 1 even if sigma x is greater than sigma y. This is also, there will be a complementary shear. Sigma x will be here also. sigma y so this is the combined loading case everything is acting together is it clear now we will find out the normal stress shear stress the plane of normal stress the plane of uh, sorry we will find out the yes the normal stress shear stress at any plane which is inclined like this suppose i am taking a plane like this I need to find the normal stress in this, shear stress in this, but my intention will be always to find the sigma normal maximum, that means sigma 1. Is it clear? My intention will be to find out the tau maximum and finally the maximum shear stress plane, maximum normal stress plane. Why? What is the reason? I have explained so many times, I will not explain anymore. Now, how to explain the orientation of this plane, draw the normal. This is the normal. Normal to this green plane. Now, that plane is making an angle phi with respect to x-axis. This is the way I am defining the orientation of this plane. So, if this angle is phi, this is 90 minus phi, this is 90 minus phi, this is 90 degrees. So, this angle is also becoming phi. Now, the final formula I am writing directly, my dear. Sigma normal I will get is sigma normal sigma x sigma x plus sigma y upon 2 plus sigma x minus of sigma y upon 2 cos 2 phi minus of tau xy sin 2 phi. Now for the first time I have introduced this term tau xy. You might feel difficult in understanding this. My dear this is tau xy this is tau yx. You will say sir please explain me. I will explain you. First box belongs to the plane on which the shear stress is acting. This shear stress tau xy which I have written it is acting in this plane. This is the x plane in which direction it is acting. It is acting in the y direction. Is it clear? Similarly, if you look into this, tau xy, no tau xy, if I look into this here, this is acting in this plane, this is the y plane and in which direction it is acting in the x direction. Is it clear to you or not? And I can say that tau yx is nothing but minus of tau xy. 
because tau xy is acting in the clockwise direction tau xy is it, it is acting in the clockwise direction and clockwise direction i will consider positive i have already told this thing if you have missed out then it's not my fault i have explained it several times tau yx is counter clockwise you can consider it negative some books will consider that shear stress um, acting in the counter clockwise direction as positive i think if you refer to gr and goodnose book there the shear stress in the counter clockwise direction is negative i'm not so, so sure but if you refer to timoshenko's book then you will find that shear stress in the clockwise direction as positive and making this assumption shear stress in the clockwise direction to be positive and therefore definitely shear stress in the counter clockwise direction to be negative we have reached to this formula we have reached to this formula you can find the explanation it is very simple you can also do the explanation just as we have drawn as we have done it for uniaxial loading but this result understanding of this result and application of this result is more important than the derivation is it clear <coughs> well i'm feeling exhausted but i'm still able to carry on now suppose suppose in a question you are solving a question particular question and in the question the state of stress is given like this there is a, a sigma x there is sigma x there is sigma y and everything is acting but the shear stress it is given to you like this shear stress in this plane it is given to you like this but my dear friend you have to use this formula this is the formula that you are going to remember if you have considered this now in the question figure they have given that the shear stress in this plane it is like this that means in this plane it is counter clockwise direction so no need to be afraid put this tau xy put in this formula tau xy suppose this is tau xy they have given to you as 50 megapascal suppose now definitely this is a counter clockwise shear counter clockwise shear is always negative in our assumption so replace this tau xy by minus 50 so in place of this tau xy put minus 50 so minus minus this will become plus but this sign will also depend on the value of phi which plane you are taking Suppose you need to find the normal stress at some this plane. This is the normal. The phi, this angle will be suppose, suppose given to you as 60 degree. Then this will become sine 20. Then this part will become minus of minus 50 sine 120. Is it clear to you or not? So any plane, the whether your plane orientation is given in any form, we should be able to use this formula is it clear similarly i can write the formula for the shear stress developed at this plane also how much will be the shear stress that is developed that also we can write it how to write it very simple shear stress that will be developed it is written like this sigma x minus of sigma y by 2 sine 2 phi plus of tau xy cos 2 phi is it clear this is the expression that we are going to uh, develop after the derivation is it clear to similarly if this is the thing given that the in the question figure the shear stress is in this plane is given 
in the counter clockwise direction then definitely this will be in the clockwise direction the complementary shear but this shear is given as so this so this is just the opposite of what you assumed you oppose you assumed like this uh, complementary shear was in the counter clockwise direction but the main shear which was acting what it was in the clockwise direction clockwise shear you I wrote as positive that's why in your case you wrote tau yx tau yx as minus of tau xy is it clear so but this is the opposite of what you wrote and suppose tau xy is given as suppose they have given tau xy as 100 megapascal so in this formula my dear you put tau xy as minus 100 put tau xy as minus 100 because 100 is given in the counterclockwise direction we have considered counterclockwise as negative that's it if in the question it is like this then this is exactly our representation this is the exactly the representation we have made while uh, uh, deriving the formula so in this case if tau xy is given as some 100 then just put 100 then just put 100 plus 100 is it clear to you or not i hope it is clear to you these things will become more and more clear when i will explain more circle to you I, because i need to take help of these formulas only now will you be able to find the plane where the normal stress is maximum is it possible for you to find the plane where the normal stress will be maximum? The plane where the shear stress will be maximum? Definitely it is possible. Why not? Suppose this is the equation you derived for the normal stress. Is it? This is the equation you derived for the normal stress. Now, only thing that you need to do is d sigma n upon d phi is equal to 0. We will use the concept of maxima minima. The, max, the normal stress sigma x and sigma y will be constant. Depending upon the values of phi, sigma, this normal stress will change. At different, for same sigma x and tau xy, at different planes, the normal stress is different. Now, where the normal stress is maximum, for that you just do this. Now, you will get your this derivation is 0. So, this will become sigma x minus sigma y upon 2 cos 2 phi differentiation is minus of 2 sin 2 phi minus tau x y sin 2 phi differentiation is cos 2 phi. 2 will be multiplied. 2, 2 goes up. So, this will be equated to 0. From here, I can write directly that sigma x minus sigma y sine 2 phi is equals to minus of uh, okay let me take it to that side and i can write minus 2 tau x y cos 2 phi so from here i can write sine 2 phi upon cos 2 phi as tan 2 phi minus of 2 x y by sigma x minus sigma y i think i have written correct is it clear now this is the value of the from here you will get value of phi okay where the normal stress will be maximum suppose suppose you got your phi as 45 degree suppose you got phi as 50 degree okay there you observe that the normal stress will be maximum so where the normal stress will be minimum Definitely, we have understood that from the right from the beginning, whether uniaxial, biaxial, the normals, the major principal plane and the minor principal plane makes an angle of makes an angle of ninety degree with each other. So, if phi is equals to fifty degree gives you the plane where the normal stress is maximum. So, phi equals to fifty plus ninety. That means one forty degree will be another plane where the normal stress is minimum also is it clear to you or not 
what i am trying to say is very simple do not make easy things complex okay think simply suppose suppose this is the state of stress suppose here sigma x is acting sigma y is acting is it clear and also some shear stress is acting i need to from this formula i, I found out that phi will be equals to 50 degree phi equals to 50 degree will be a plane like this this will be the normal and wait let me draw with a different coloring so phi will be equals to 50 degree so this will be that plane so this will be a plane where the normal stress is maximum so i can write that by sigma 1 because sigma 1 stands for the maximum normal stress at phi is equals to 144 degree that means 90 degree to this plane there is a plane sigma 2 where the normal stress is minimum So this will be sigma 2, this will be sigma 1. Now, my dear, tell me that what will be the shear stress in these planes at the 550 degree and 140 degree plane? It is 0, zero because we have understood that at because we have understood that the shear stress value at the principal planes is 0. Is it clear? Is it clear to you or not? You can take any numerical and you can check that. Now let us understand that where shear stress will be maximum. For that I am erasing this formula. But I need to write the formula of shear stress. Quite obvious thing. So tau is nothing but sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 phi plus of tau xy cos 2 phi so dt upon d phi will be equal to 0 so i will get sigma x minus sigma y upon 2 cos sin 2 phi is nothing but cos 2 phi 2 will be multiplied 2 2 goes off plus of I hope that I am doing right. Cos 2 phi upon sin 2 phi is nothing but 2 tau xy upon sigma x minus sigma y. In case of uh, the maximum normal stress we found out tan 2 phi is equal to minus of 2 tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y but this is the formula for tau maximum at these planes the shear stress will become maximum okay now for the same problem suppose we got at phi is equal to 50 degree the normal stress the principal planes then can you tell me my dear that where what will be the phi you will get from here what will be the plane of maximum shear stress it will be 50 plus 45 degree these things i have explained in case of uniaxial loading that's why i was investing so much of time in uniaxial loading so at a phi equals to 95 degree plane the shear stress will be maximum in this figure it is not possible for me to show i could have shown you over here also if you make a big picture when that i will do in my next lecture and then everything whether shear stress maximum plane maximum normal stress plane you can show in one figure only but in this case i will show it in a different manner if i was this was an approximation 
this was not approximation assumption phi equals to 50 degree was the plane where the normal stress was maximum now definitely i told you the maximum principle that the principal planes are separated by 45 degree from the maximum shear stress planes so this was the state of stress let me erase this figure we are done with this isn't it now let me show you the maximum shear stress plane only so this was the state of stress state of stress is important sigma x sigma y sigma x and this is your sigma y there was here also some tau value now what how to locate phi equals to 95 degree plane it will be like this the normal will be like this try to observe if you observe this then everything will become clear so this is the plane where I can say that the shear stress is maximum. Is it clear? So this will become tau maximum. Because you can see that this is the 95 degree plane. This angle is 95 degree. It is looking little bit greater than 95 degree. But it's just an assumption an approximation in this case is it clear and another maximum shear stress plane will be 90 degree from here that is the complementary shear it will be something like this is it clear to you or not no i have put the directions wrong the value of this, these directions and the value of these planes will become more clear once you take up a, a numerical problem with definite value. Okay. So these are the planes of maximum shear tau max, tau max, tau max. Now, what is happening to the normal stress at the plane of maximum shear? Is it zero? No. There is definitely some value of the normal stress also. But it is not maximum. Neither it is minimum. How to find out the value? We have derived the formula for sigma normal also. I wrote it, isn't it? From that, in that formula, you put the value of phi as 95 degree. You will get the normal stress acting in this plane. You put the value of phi as 95 plus 90. You will get the normal stress in this plane. Is it clear to you or not? <coughs> sigma normal. Sigma x plus sigma y by 2. Plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 phi. No, this was cos 2 phi minus of tau xy sin 2 phi. Is it clear? So in this value, just put phi as 95 degree. You will get a value of normal stress. Sigma normal I am writing. I cannot write it sigma 1 because this is not the maximum principal plane. Maximum principal stress plane. Okay. Similarly, these things you I am writing tensile, but it can be compressive also depending on the value of this sigma x, sigma y and all these stuffs. Is it clear? Similarly, you put phi as uh, 95 plus 90 degree. You can observe that this nine, the normal to this plane, the normal to this plane, if you observe, the normal to this plane is making an angle of this angle is 90 degree. So 90 plus this 95. If you put 90 plus 95 over here, then you will get the normal stress over here. Let it be sigma n dashed. So this will be sigma n. This will be sigma n dashed. Is it clear to you? So normal stress is not zero. Normal stress is not zero at the plane where shear stress is maximum but shear stress is the absent at a plane where the normal stress is maximum so this was all about combined loading now i was talking about uh, deriving the norm uh, formula 
of uniaxial loading from this general formula of from this generalized formula that i will give you as a home task you tell me that whether i have taught you right or not in the formula we got sigma x plus sigma y by 2 uh, plus, plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 phi minus of tau xy sin 2 phi isn't is it clear to you or not now in this formula for uniaxial loading uniaxial loading uniaxial loading if you observe then sigma y is equals to 0 there was no shear stress present so tau xy will become 0 sigma y will become 0 sigma y will become 0 from here also so i am left with sigma x by 2 plus of sigma x by 2 cos 2 phi so i am left with sigma x by 2 1 plus cos 2 phi something like that this from here you tell me that whether i will get the formula that i derived for this normal loading in uniaxial load normal stress in uniaxial loading what the final formula that you should derive is p upon p p upon a into cos square phi p upon a is nothing but sigma x cos square phi is it clear i can see this thing cos square phi actually i it myself has derived this you derive for the shear stress one and verify okay the generalized shear stress formula was this tau is equals to sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sine 2 phi minus of tau xy cos plus of tau xy cos 2 phi in this case if you put sigma y as 0 tau xy as 0 because it's a uniaxial loading condition and you check the final formula for tau you are getting as p upon 2a sine 2 phi or not is it clear p upon a you can write as sigma x upon 2 sine 2 phi one thing i have not told you again it is the i have shown you that how to find the plane where the normal stress and the shear stress will be maximum but i have not told you that what will be the value of those nor maximum normal stress and the shear stress one thing you can do is that you can find out the value of phi and then you can put in this expression then you will get sigma normal maximum similarly you can find out the value of phi from here and you will get the plane where the shear stress is maximum in this way also you can do you can derive derive a direct formula from more circle okay so in next lecture i will explain each and every concept about more circle there uh, you will be able to understand but in case of more circle i am not going to explain these things once again okay i hope that i am able to make make you understand that what is the meaning of state of stress how to draw the state of stress for different loading condition and how to use these formulas thank you very much please please uh, tell your doubts in the comment section or you can uh, tell your doubts in the facebook page i have got uh, i will try my best to explain you but please once more i am telling please listen this video very carefully otherwise no point of uh, this much of hard work i am not asking anything from you just i want that put your sincere efforts in understanding whatever i have taught in this video lecture i have taught lots of things i have taught many chapters actually in a in together in this um, some one hour 30 minute lecture 